Hey yourself gourmet, back at it again. Welcome to the show. Today we got a fried egg, and one would think that they're not particularly difficult. And to get through the practice of actually feeding it to edibleness, it's not terribly hard to do. But when it comes to making a fried egg that's worthy of song and legend, well, then that's an entirely different story. So what we've got here, oh, I'd say about a, a little more than a half tablespoon of butter. We're going to let that melt in. Give it a little hand down to the bottom. Wipe it off there. A little more just for fun. Because it's butter. Who doesn't love butter? And it's actually not as bad for you as you think. Okay. Now, we've also got a fried egg about to happen. And before it's fried, it is raw. And here we have it inside of this lovely little glass. Now, I do that just because it looks nice when I'm doing a show. Technically, you can crack the egg right over the pan. But once the butter gets a little melty, crank that heat up to high. You want to start it on a medium, just that way it doesn't singe the butter when you're putting it in. Work the butter around the pan best you can. Put it down a little bit. Go ahead and work it across and over. And what that does is it coats the pan. And in coating the pan, makes it more likely not to stick because yes sometimes even teflon sticks so we're about to dump it in the pan as you can see it's starting to get nice and warm we're going to let that sizzle a little bit and when it does we're going to put it right in and get our fried egg going and three two one there we go and now as you can see right away it starts to form a little bit of a white. Now, the hotter the better is generally the idea with the pan but you don't want to go over the heat so once you reach that point and it starts to whiten, you're going to wait for it to be all opaque at the bottom because that'll give you a signal that you can start to scoop up the bottoms of the egg and get it to flip around and switch, switch in the pan for when you flip it over. And now the heat is kicking up on this nice and well. We're going to let it do its job. I'm going to start poking at the edges ever so slightly just to give it a little lift, let the butter oil get under there. And now, oh, it's starting to release couple of more seconds on that bit right there where there's a lot more of the albumin of the egg that needs to get heated up. So we're going to put that under there. Oh, now we got to move. Okay. So we got it moving freely. This is great. This is a good sign of an egg. Now in about 10 or 12 seconds, we're going to flip it over. What I'm going to do in the meantime, sprinkle a pinchish little dash of sea salt because that's going to taste great when it flips over and it really brings out the flavor of eggs. So here we are. Now I'm going to get it nice and moving and I'm going to spin it a little by means of the motion of the pan so that when I flip it, it's just up and over and that's all there is to it. Now flips can be more perfect, mind you. That wasn't the greatest flip that has ever happened, but a fried egg is lovely when you can see that it is a nice lacy pattern, but it is not brown or golden, which indicates an overcooked protein. This is this is not an over easy egg, but this is definitely a nice fried egg. Is over easy? You would see it with the and maybe it is an over easy egg. So somewhere in between that, it's not over medium because the yolk is still going to be soft in the middle. But in about ten seconds, we're going to turn it off. Right now, I'm turning it down just a tad. This is all nice and cooked. And we have ourselves a fried egg. Do with it as you please. Eat it just as it is, reptile style, or put it on a nice piece of toast. And uh, what do they call them? Eggs in a basket over there across the pond? Do it yourself, gourmet. See you next time. Okay. Yeah, pick, take the picture. Take the picture.